Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and in this tank I have four corals that are very similar to each other. Three of which are basically ubiquitous in the hobby, you can find them anywhere, and one is on Obtanium. Now, while they're all very similar in appearance, they're very different in personalities. So let's go look at Seriatopora, Palaustrea, Stylophora, and Possilopora. To begin with, let's talk about Possilopora. Possilopora is a really cool, easy coral. If you're looking to get into SPS, nothing beats Possilopora. This stuff is incredibly hardy. It comes in really two or three basic colors. You've got your greens, so different shades of green. This is a little more on the teal side, but you'll see some really bright greens out there, all the way to the darker greens. And of course, then you've got your red and pink side of the spectrum. You'll see super bright pinks, all the way down to purples and browns. So in the hobby, we'll see a lot of these kind of tight nodule looking Possiloporas, but there are many different species out there. So keep your eyes open. But this stuff right here is super hardy. I've had this colony for years. Right now it's sitting up on top of the tank. It's getting pounded with light. It's sitting right under a Kessel. It's getting hit hard with light. It absolutely loves it here. But this same colony has grown in basically full shade. And while I'm not going to say it did great, it did survive. So this coral can handle basically medium low light all the way to high light. But if you really want to make this coral succeed, Highlight, high flow, is what it wants. And then it is a stony coral, so if you're planning on keeping it, you're gonna have to keep your calcium alkalinity in normal reef ranges. Now this coral isn't gonna be too sensitive to that kind of stuff, but it could be a problem. The other interesting thing about Possilopora is something called polyp bailout. If the temperature changes too much in the tank, the polyps will actually come off of the coral colony, float around the tank, and reattach somewhere on the rockwork. So if you buy Possilopora, just know if it becomes stressed out, you may end up with Possilopora in places you weren't planning on it. But for the most part, it's a really easy coral and I highly recommend it. Next, let's look at Seriatopora, also known as bird's nest. It has a similar look to the Possilopora sitting next to it, except it's got the longer branching structure. Now, this version of Seriatopora that I keep is much fluffier than a lot of the bird's nests out there you've probably seen before. I absolutely love this strain. It is gorgeous, and it kind of has that teal fading to purple. I love this colony. And I got it years ago, and I've raised up huge colonies and killed huge colonies off over the years. So bird's nest, I would say, most of the time is an easy coral. But when conditions turn into something it doesn't like, it dies off. Once it starts dying off, good luck saving it. When I say that I've had this colony for years, basically the colony would collapse and I'd find a little piece of it laying somewhere, glue it back on, and another huge colony would grow back relatively quickly. In fact, look at the growth rate of this colony from when I started it with it to where it is now. And I'll try to label the dates here because I'm filming from behind the camera. But the growth rates are explosive. You'll see a ton of different variants on this. There's the pinks and purples, which I absolutely adore. They're usually not fuzzy like this. And then on the green side, you'll see greens and yellows and purples, and it's all really cool. My favorite is this really fluffy green purple variety, but I've kept tons over the years. The reason I don't have tons now is because they grow really fast, but when things go wrong, they die off. So this is the lone survivor. And in fact, last time my tank crashed, I took a piece of this colony, I stuck it over in the 24 gallon nano. When things were better, I took that piece, put it back over here, and that's where this colony came from. Yes, it's a beautiful coral, it grows fast, it's easy, 
It's just not hardy when things go wrong. But I highly recommend this coral to anybody who wants to try it. Just know it may start to die off, and when it does, it's hard to save. Now let's talk about Stylophora. You can see it kind of looks like a mix between the bird's nest we just looked at and the Pocillopora. The polyps to me look a little bit bigger. It's kind of got this same teal green kind of color with this kind of yellowish base below it that you really can't see too well. But this is a worldwide piece. It's a frag from worldwide. It's really nice and it was really inexpensive. I want to say this thing was like 15 bucks, picked it up cheap. And it's relatively slow growing compared to the other two. Now this particular colony is in somewhat shade. It's below the bracing in the center of the tank. So even though it's up high, it's just not getting the light that the other two are getting. And it also has those bigger, heavier branches. But when my tank crashed last time, this coral sailed through it. It was like nothing happened. Everything went wrong in the tank and this coral could not be bothered. And same as the other corals, you're gonna find this in basically shades of pink, purples, and browns, and basically shades of green. Obviously, brighter is better, but this one here is just that nice teal color. It's super easy to keep, and it's a really cool coral. It's gonna get big, heavy branches. I love it. And as far as easy SPS goes, really, I cannot recommend Stylophora enough. Next, let's talk about Palauistrea. This coral is unobtainium. It's relatively rare in the wild, and what really makes it unobtainium, though, is that nobody collects it. This coral was collected by Jake Adams, and I need to make a little bit of a correction now. I don't know, four or five months ago, I did a reef update video where I called this Anacropora. It is not, it doesn't look anything like Anacropora. Nobody actually caught it as far as I know because nobody mentioned it, but it's one of those things I caught once I uploaded it to YouTube. I put the video on and it's like, ah, oh, crap. Well, it was too hard to fix at that point, so I just left it. This is Palauistrea, and it was collected by Jake Adams, who gave me this frag many years ago. So Jake collected it, brought it home, and then he fragged a piece off, which he gave to me. I brought it home, put it in my frag tank, and it died, basically from the base to the tip. It just slowly died off. All that was left was a little tiny bit around the tip. I was about ready to throw this colony away, but since I had a few good polyps on top, I let it live. I left it. I left it for years downstairs in the frag tank. Well, over time, it recovered. So it filled back in, and now I've got it up in the big display, and it's really doing well up here. So I'm really excited to see what this coral does. It's an SPS with white polyps, which is really interesting. It's got big, heavy branches, so I'm really excited to see what this does. Hardiness-wise, I'm gonna say it's a relatively hardy, probably somewhere between bird's nest and Pocillopora. It's super easy, super, or well, I wouldn't say super easy, it's a super cool coral, but good luck finding a piece. I know of this one, I know of the colony Jake keeps, and that's all I know about in the United States. There's probably more, but that's all I know about. So super rare coral, and I'd love to know in the comments what you think about this coral. Is it just a weird coral for somebody like me who's a bit of a coral freak and just wants to collect them all like Pokemon? Or is this something we should actively, actively be looking to propagate? Because I'm really interested in it and want to see what it looks like as a large colony. Because really, while it's not bright, bright does not make a coral cool in my opinion. So there we go. There's four similar corals with very different personalities that I highly recommend. As far as beginning hobbyists, I don't think anything is going to be Pocillopora or Stylophora. These are really easy. And if you can, I recommend getting aquacultured specimens. Bird's nest is usually pretty easy. 
but it is one that if it starts to go south is likely going to die on you. And Palawistrea, if you can find one, get it. So thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.